Hi YouTube, AC Don here again, and uh, not been on for a while, but uh, I thought I'd start off uh, with a fresh video, uh, something nothing to do with minis, but uh, I've got a nice repair video for you. So uh, to this end, I've got a new hydraulic cylinder for my press, because my press is currently leaking everywhere, and uh, although it's still working, it's making a mess. So uh, before I carry on with this year, clearly I need to fix it. So here's a video of me uh, repairing the press and some of the uh, machine work that I need to do uh, in order to actually get the press functional uh, and back together again. Okay, so the hydraulic press, what does it look like? Well, there we go. Just sits in the corner, tucked away in my workshop. And uh, unfortunately, if we look under there, you'll see there's drips and it's absolutely covered in hydraulic oil. So when I leave this press not used, I have to leave a rag on the platen um, to soak up all the oil that runs out of it. So uh, I've got to the point now where clearly I need to do something about it. So interestingly, uh, this uh, press has had three rams in it since I've known it, or at least three, um, and they all go the same way. So uh, what I'm actually gonna do this time, instead of replacing the RAM with the same one, because clearly, uh, whatever I'm doing to it, uh, I'm overloading the seals because they don't last too long. The RAM that I put in there, uh, it wasn't a new one, but it was uh, uh, a second-hand, but a good used one. Uh, it lasted about two or three weeks um, before it started leaking. So uh, this time, I'm hopefully, I'm going to do a more permanent repair. And uh, we're going to replace that complete piston assembly. With a bigger one so currently this is rated at 10 tons but as you can see this press is uh, quite well assembled and i think is more than capable of dealing with the the 18 tons the new ram is going to be uh, uh rated at when i put in it i'll say more than capable i think it's i wouldn't say it's more than capable i'd say it is probably capable so uh, what i'm going to do is do a few load tests when i get it and do a few deflection tests and just to see, give me an idea of what the uh, the, the frame will hold. Uh, in reality, I only need probably 15 tonnes at the most, so I'm never really going to use that full capacity. Uh, but the idea is is to allow me to um, uh, put a degree of uh, headroom on that hydraulic ram so I don't push it to its limit. Um, that's the reality of what I'm trying to achieve. So uh, basically the work involves removing this plate, as you can see, uh, the, the current ram is uh, threaded into this plate um, and it's just got four bolts holding it on. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the ram um, and then take the plate off. And the work needed to, to be done really is to uh, basically open up the hole in this plate so that the new ram will fit in. So let's get that underway. So after gratuitous use of Stilson's, Managed to get the ram loose and out she comes. Okay, so we have the ram plate off. Uh, I've removed the ram, you can see the thread in the middle, and then obviously we can see this, uh, which was um, a modification I did many years ago uh, when I got a ram and I couldn't get it to fit, and the thread was too small, so <laughs> I bodged it, cut it open and uh, open the plate up and make the thread just enough so I can get that in. Uh, ironically, that worked very well. However, uh, the thread was still tight, so that may have caused the premature failure of the subsequent rams that I'd fitted. So uh, initially, thinking I was being clever, might have mean that in reality, uh, I was actually causing myself a problem uh, in the long term. So although that, that modification has lasted uh, some 12 years, um, uh, in that time I have had uh, leaking problems with the ram so what we're going to do now is we're going to fix that so I'm just going to feed that out I'm going to weld that up uh, mount this in the lathe remachine the plate cut the thread to the correct size for the new ram uh, which is a standard size uh, and we're going to uh, open that out to an M75 by 2 uh, which is uh, what the thread is on the ram uh, and then go from there Okay, this gives you some idea. Uh, this is the old ram, this is the new ram, uh, and you can see it's much larger in diameter. Uh, there's an appreciable thread on the outside, which I'm gonna to use to uh, uh, mount that into the uh, 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 ram holder. 
Um, so yeah, much bigger diameter, which obviously for the same pressure gives us a lot more force. So that's the, that's the plan. Um, the uh, original Ram, this was a Sealy one. Uh, they're all pretty much generic. Um, it's got obviously seal problems in here, which means it leaks. Uh, I've never really had a satisfactory uh, a service life from any of these rams but i think it's because of the the poor thread um which i've alluded to earlier uh in the holder so that's the reason for making uh, a proper job of it this time not bodging uh we'll cut a nice proper thread on get this mounted um it's also got another ring which screws on here to give you even more support so obviously there's a backer as well so you screw that in and that holds it in from the back and then the large one goes on the front and that gives you even more uh, uh, strength. Um, you could also mount this uh, in, the, in the ram plate just by boring a hole out and just using this either side of the ram plate to hold it in. But I don't like the idea of that. They give you a nice lot of thread for a reason. So I'm going to thread the plate um, and, and uh, make a nice fit and we'll go from there. So plate prep wise, what I've now done uh, is I've V'd out. Uh, the cut all the way around uh, and I'm just going to run uh, a few beads of MIG weld in there It doesn't have to be all the way through. I used to operate this with a cut in it uh, because um, You know the plate is more than thick enough to deal with that where it's supported because clearly it's bolted up and the pressure uh, Goes into the frame of the press. So uh, just a couple of runs of uh, MIG weld to fill that up and then uh, I'll go over with a flat disc to uh, uh, Smooth that off when we're done and then it's ready to go in the lathe. Uh, the other thing I've done is um, I've taken the uh, collar uh, off of the new ram, offered it up and just uh, mark that on there so I know where I am when I'm uh, welding, etc., uh, and where I'm gonna be once I've machined that out. So uh, the reality is I don't actually need to weld right up to the, to the very end. Clearly it was easy just to V it out to the end, but uh, I can stop a little bit short um, just so that uh, when I'm thread cutting, uh, there's not a hard spot where the weld is. So I'll just bear that in mind when I weld that in. Uh, and I've also V'd out all the way around the end as well. So as I say, let's get cracking with that. Okay, just using my little MIG welder, uh, I've run a bead of weld on both sides just to fill that gap in. Um, the uh, Clearly, uh, this is very thick. Um, so uh, my poor little MIG welder is only 100 amps, so she run on full power, so that's a full power pass, uh, but it's filled the gap in nicely. Uh, it's the same on the other side. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just let that cool down, then we'll grind that flush, and then we can go over to the lathe. So I've run over it with the uh, my uh, battery powered grinder, smooth that off both sides, um, and now that's ready to mount in the lathe. Uh, obviously, I used a combination of just normal grinding disc to take down the, um, you know, the uh, the majority, and uh, then a good old uh, flap disc just to uh, give that a nice blend in. So yeah, uh, that's come out really well. So very happy with that. And now we can uh, go over, get that mounted in the four jaw, and start the process of boring that hole out. Okay, so I've got the four jaw chuck mounted on the Colchester. As you can see, we've got the uh, uh, the plate uh, mounted in the machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually reface this face. And the idea there is uh, that will make that nice and uh, parallel to the bore. So the uh, point is when I uh, bolt this back onto the press, at least the um, screwed ram will be perpendicular to that face. So that's the first machine in operation. So here we go. Start facing it off.
bit more you can now see how um, flat that surface is so uh, this is why we're doing it And we're aiming around uh, anywhere from 200 to 250 meters a minute surface speed to keep this uh, to keep a good finish. Because I've got a variable speed lay, this makes this quite simple. You just uh, wind the speed up as the tool goes in. Don't want to go too fast, you'll burn the tip out. we continue until we get it clean. Nearly there.
Nearly there. One more pass, I think, and we've got it. Perfect. Hope you found that useful. Uh, I'll leave it there for part one. Um, join us soon in part two when we'll obviously get the job finished. Uh, and for the moment, if you can please like and subscribe, I'll be much appreciated. Thank you very much.